All right, we're back looking at the generator transfer switch here again. And uh, the video has gotten a lot of, how do you want to say, airplay. I'm guessing because of the hurricane and all the other stuff uh, that's been going on. A lot of people are wiring up generator transfer switches, and I've gotten a lot of questions. So I want to answer a few of those. So here we go. We're going to take a look at how this has been wired. Last time we talked in theory how it was all going to go. Now we're going to show exactly. So we have our main wire coming in from our generator from outside, and it's a heavy. How heavy is that wire, Dad? Well, this well, it's either ten or it's either ten or eight. I forget. Ten or eight. I'll bet we can see on there. Let's see here. Ten. 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 Okay. So we've got ten gauge wire. And then uh, inside the panel here, you make this up. These are these little magnetic pieces, or they look like little magnets, are the CTs, the current transformers. And they tell these meters how many amps are going through these wires. So we have one on the black. Uh, where is it at? Uh, it's buried back in there a little bit. That's okay, Dad. We don't need to dig for it. We've got one on the big black wire, and we've got one on the big red wire coming out of right out of this box. Mm -hmm. So the, the rubber wire here is from the outside. The uh, slick wire, if you will, with the CT on it is from this box. So that's how it's wired. Then down below here, we've got a 90 coming out. We've got some flex cable here into a bushing. Uh, hopefully everybody can see that on the inside of the panel there. And then we have all the red and black wires that we talked about last time, which are uh, the feeds and what? Uh, it's, it's it's the feeds from the breaker to the standby breaker, right? And then back out back out to the system there. Okay. And so you pick between the generator and the breaker to go back to the original circuit. The there circuit's you go. The circuit's interrupted at this point. At that point. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when you just flipped that breaker, you just screwed something up in your house there. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, I did. It, it's okay. So there's a, there's a clock somewhere flashing 12. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so basically what we did is each one of these breakers has two wires coming out of it, right? And mm -hmm. we disconnected. Am I saying that right? We disconnected. We, we disconnected the house circuit from the breaker. Yes. We, we took it off. We replaced it with a red breaker, with a red wire. From here. From here and goes to here. Yes. The black comes back and feeds the circuit. Okay. Going out into and the house. so where is this an example of that right here? This is an example. So right that's here. an example. So the black one ties into the wire that used to go into the breaker. So this yes. is circuit number 20. It came from this. I don't know if that's focusing or not. That's it's not focusing. That says 20 where my fingernail is, and this says 20 on here. So uh, that's the kicker right there. You take your wire off the breaker, connect it to the black. The black goes down here, through there, up into here. You bring the red one back out, and then the red one hooks in to the back side of the breaker. Mm -hmm. So what one of the questions was, Dad, <coughs> somebody said, why don't you just get a big 200 amp switch here and then you can have every circuit you want. You just hook your generator directly to that 200 amp switch and then just turn off a bunch of circuits. Don't load it up so the generator doesn't blow up. If you took your hots here, mm -hmm. zzz, yep. ran them into a switch, mm -hmm. then ran your uh, generator power into the other side of that. It had to be a double pull switch. Double pull switch, double, th double throw. Double double throw yes and then you'd have to have another panel right to then protect those circuits you could do that well what I'm saying is you the the output of that switch goes here boop the output of the switch goes there okay onto the lugs so your circuits are still protected you're just which power is going into here that's what you're switching you so probably, your yep. circuits are still protected but then but then that takes a big 200 amp Double pull, double throw switch. Yes, and you have to interrupt what's going on here. Yes. This, this is an aftermarket. Yes. An aftermarket, which is UL approved. I got you. And so then the other the other key is the power goes off. You're on generator power. You're going, going, going. 
now the power comes back on. When you come down here and flip this, it's an instantaneous switch, right? From the generator to the other one. So if you had a big switch mounted up there that was a double pull, double throw, mm -hmm. when you cut away and cut back on, you got to re everything's restarting again. There's no mm -hmm. there's no transfer of power. It's cut the power, put the power back on. Yes. Right. And I could have when I built this place, I could have put that double pull, double hold switch outside. Very very expensive. That's what that, Very expensive. that was what my thought was, is that it's cost prohibitive to put in a 200 amp switch like that. Okay, and one other point, when you do that, say you're on generator power and you throw the switch and you're on generator power, you have all these, you have to come down and manually throw each one of them that you don't want on that circuit off at that time. Right. I have it all here. So now you have, uh, so let's, let's do the quick math, 200 amps times 110 volts. 20,000 watts? Probably, yes. If it was full load. It's, plus, this plus, isn't full load, I know. that's fine. Plus or minus. You have 400, 400 amps here. 400 amps. Let's say you're using half of them. I don't know if you do or not, but but you'd be talking 20,000 watts there. Yeah. A little 3,000 watt or 4,000 no. watt generator is not no. going to cut it. No. This, this determines right here exactly what circuits are on the emergency generator. Right. If, if I had the double pole switch... You could, yes, you could feed this. You yes. Have all these on. Well, pretty soon you're loaded up. Your generator's out there working its rear end off because it right. can't keep up. So you have to manually come and pick the ones that you want off. Right. Leave the ones on that you need for the essential service. I've got it simplified right here. Okay. And then the other conversation we had a long, long time ago was about generator size and keeping the heat on in the winter. Yes. So if you have a heat pump and you're wanting to back up generator the heat pump, what's the answer? Pretty good size generator. Huge. 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 Big. Very cost prohibitive. Cost prohibitive. So trying to keep 200 amps or 400 amps worth of power going is going to cost a small fortune just to have the generator. And what I've done is I have infrared heaters here, mm -hmm. which will pull, uh, I can't think of the pull on those darn things, but it's a heck of a lot less pull than the heat pump. And I can heat with two of those. I can heat a medium-sized house and be able to do it with my generator. And it's uh, those are 110 volt units. Those are 110 volt units. Yes, and they, they draw probably 15 amps or probably, or less. Probably or less. Probably 15 or less. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. yep. We keep what we keep on here is um, uh, the lights in the in the main bedroom, uh, the television, a light in the kitchen. We have the uh, circuit there for the infrared heater, the microwave, the refrigerator, the garage door opener. Smoke detector, that's kind of important. We have smoke detection here. We have the other heater in the basement. And then we've got an outlet, one outlet at the kitchen sink, which I have dedicated. And that would be for shared with a coffee pot, a toaster, a broaster, that sort of thing, one at a time. But it is a dedicated outlet. It isn't hooked with any other circuits in the house. Okay. Yes. Well, there we go. We answered a few questions about the generator transfer switch. We saw how it was wired up there. We talked about uh, strategies for doing a whole house and uh, the cost behind that. And uh, yeah, there we go. So enjoy. Hopefully the, that answered a bunch of questions for people. Thank you, Dad. Tell them don't let your meatloaf. Don't let your meatloaf. There we go.